This year, about 5% of merino sheep across southern Australia have died from blowfly strike. It's a shocking and agonising death, and for most growers, the controversial practice of mulesing is the most effective way of saving their sheep. Sean Murphy reports on trials of new pain relief medication, which some of the industry's staunchest critics argue is an important interim measure until viable mulesing alternatives are found. And we should warn that viewers may find some of the images in this story confronting. At Royal Oak near Goulburn in New South Wales, it's lamb marking time. But these superfine wool patali merinos are being injected with a light sedative before they undergo the sorts of on-farm surgical operations that are commonplace across the industry. A University of Sydney research team is monitoring the effectiveness of using the sedative analgesic xylazine as a pre-operative pain relief measure. Preliminary results from some um, small trials that we've done so far have shown us that we do get a highly significant difference between lambs that have been treated with xylazine and lambs that haven't in terms of their pain responses to at the time of mulesing. And from today's trial, I think we'll probably see a similar level of significant difference there as well. Three. 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 Mulesing is a confronting but necessary procedure. It's the surgical removal of skin folds which catch dung and urine and attract blowflies. This year's wet summer saw more than 5% of ewes and weathers across southern Australia die from fly strike. It's an agonising death, but the pain of prevention has damaged the Australian wool industry's international standing. Faced with retail boycotts, the industry's marketing and research company, Australian Wool Innovation, has promised to encourage growers to use pain relief until alternatives to mulesing are found. Xylazine is already an approved veterinary product. Its application in small doses is being developed by Animal Ethics, the same company which introduced the post-operative spray treatment trisulfan. It's been elusive to find something we could use that was so easy and so practical. So this, this for us is probably closing a loop seven years ago of, of a full pre and post operation that I think is the ultimate alternative for mulesing and other operations. And this method we found works much better. Yeah. Former AWI director Chick Olsen is a major shareholder in animal ethics. He says trisulfan will be used on more than five million lambs this year and he hopes the new pre-operative treatment has the same take-up. But he says it's not just farmers that need convincing. At this trial, the RSPCA and Animal Liberation were interested observers. You have to bring these people in. You have to be inclusive. You have to be transparent. Uh, we came into an industry where these people were being sued by the former regime, and our viewpoint is let's bring them in together. Let's, let's make them part of the team. And if they truly believe in welfare, they'll work with us on it. So it's, it's critical that they're here. Animal Ethics Technical Director Dr Meredith Scheel is also an AWI director. She's a paediatrician and fine wool grower who's been working on pain relief for animals since 2004. She says the new treatment is complementary to trisulfan and should be available for about 30 cents a sheep. I think it's important for us to do a wide range of field trials and that's what uh, today is about. We want to look at the dose and the applicator, uh, make sure that we can get a product that farmers can use that's safe, that's effective in a whole range of environments, whether you're in the middle of the outback or whether you're in the top of the mountains in the middle of winter. So um, for us, it's a matter of uh, doing more of these field trials, trials over the coming year. And, um, but if the results are great, you know, we, we're hopeful that we could have a product very quickly. I can move to the back. Yeah. But again, at the end of the day, it comes down to cost. Animal Ethics got a near half a million dollar Commonwealth Government grant to help develop its new application. Dr Shields says she can manage any perceived conflict of interest between her role with animal ethics and as a director of AWI. My interest is declared and I would withdraw from being involved with discussions or um, 
uh, voting, for example, on any of those sorts of issues. And that's the way that I have handled it ever since I've been on the board. So, you know, uh, wherever the company itself may be investing in research into um, pain relief or uh, procedures uh, to reduce the need for mulesing even, um, you know, my interest in trisulfan is fully open and declared and I'm always willing to withdraw from those sort of uh, conversations and decisions. Another interested observer at the Royal Oak trial was Lawrence Modiano. His family company is the largest wool processor in the world and he's also a former AWI director. Um, no. How significant is the mulesing issue still in Europe? On a day-to-day -day basis, uh, I have to be honest, we don't get that much inquiry for non-mulesed wool. Nevertheless, the, uh, the threat is always there and I believe that it's very important for us as an industry to be seen to be doing the right thing uh, with regard to the welfare of the animal. Lawrence Modiano says wool is booming in Europe and even with a correction as much as 30% on current prices, the future of the industry looks solid. There has been a significant shift back towards European uh, wool processing. Uh, machinery capacity is almost fully utilised. My customers are very, very busy. There's very little stock of wool, wool tops, or yarn in European uh, warehouses. I'm told that because of the huge uh, increase in costs of labour and power and land in China, that certain articles are now as cheap, if not cheaper, to produce in, in Europe. And obviously the high price of wool means that the higher cost of processing in Europe is mitigated. Also the fact that China itself has grown so significantly in economic terms in the last uh, few years means that they're consuming more of their own output, which takes the pressure off their need to export, which means that the European retail chain is now once again depending more and more on the European supply chain for its needs. Your brief time as a director with Australian Wool Innovation could probably fairly be described as volatile and you resigned over differences of opinion on how wool should be marketed. Do you still have those strong reservations about the direction of the industry's marketing? Look, I came to Australia uh, this time in order to witness the progress which is being made uh, on mulesing and animal welfare. I will have things to say about my time at AWI and how I see the future for AWI in due course, but I'd rather not bring that issue on board right now. He says the industry can't ignore the threat that mulesing or any surgical procedures pose to its reputation for producing a sustainable natural product. On that score, in Australia at least, the animal protection lobby is supportive of the work being done on pain relief. We have certainly come a long, long way, you know, from the time when this whole uh, issue uh, became a crisis and attracted international attention. And the whole issue of welfare of um, lambs being mules was probably not being looked at as directly and as honestly as it should have been. The fact that pain relief is being used um, on those lambs that are being mules, uh, that of course is a positive as well. But from an animal welfare perspective, um, I think we'd like to see mulesing ended over the, the medium to longer term. We're coming in there, 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 <coughs> there, there, there and there. One of the this most promising cool. alternatives to mulesing is Escal skin traction, a non-surgical intradermal injection that constricts blood flow and makes the offending skin folds fall off. But the developers of skin traction are still seeking regulatory approval. Three. Three, so that is for birth coat. Yep, uh, two. The CSIRO has been working on selectively breeding for fly strike resistance, and Animal Liberation says farmers must be working towards this in the next couple of years. It's clear from the research that's coming through from the CSIRO and Australian Wool Innovation is that within about two years, a grower, if they assertively, uh, genetically select to breed out the wrinkles, they can select for animals to be as resistant to fly strike as if they had been mules. So if that's the case, then I say that we're going to hopefully see the end of mulesing in two years' time. Even if that happens, though, treatments such as xylazine may still have an international market for pain relief 
in a range of on-farm procedures. Because it's a general systemic effect that, that really affects the entire body, we think that it may be very useful for any sort of marking procedure uh, in any farm animal. So, um, you know, we're talking about castration, tail docking, possibly even dehorning, uh, not just in sheep but in cattle and pigs. You know, the, the issue of procedures in farm animals is not confined to sheep. It's a, um, it, it's a growing issue of concern globally um, across all livestock industries.